Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we're doing something slightly different. Uh, you may have noticed uh, that uh, the thumbnails on my videos are generally having a pun, or a play of words, or a little riddle in, in the writing that's on them that doesn't quite match the title. And this is all deliberate. So uh, what, I was, what, I, what I felt like doing was going through probably some of the more obscure ones that I've uploaded this year. And, um, you know, just in, in case you've either missed completely what the intent with this whole thing was, or if you couldn't figure out what it was, uh, just, you know, solve the, <laughs> the question as to uh, what does it mean that I'm writing onto these thumbnails? Let's begin, and this is in no particular order, let's begin with the Zetan. Uh, Zetan being the tier 8 German battlecruiser. And uh, the text on the thumbnail says Sternzerstörer, which is German, because it's a German ship, for Star Destroyer. And that's because if you look at the superstructure, especially uh, the, the main tower, it looks very much like a Star Destroyer from Star Wars. So, and because it's German, I had to do it in German. You may also notice the font. I tend to use particular fonts for particular nations. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Yamato Review. This is uh, obviously Uchu Senkan. Uh, for anybody who, who, who knows anime, this is a reference to the space battleship Yamato, which is a very famous anime. Unfortunately, due to copyright, I couldn't use the song, but uh, it's a favorite anime, a famous anime, where they dig out the Yamato and turn it into a spaceship that saves Earth. And that's what I'm going to mention about it. But yeah, that's obviously where the title comes from. This one is on the Visby, the Swedish destroyer. And uh, the title says Hasti, which is Swedish for quick, as far as I know. But it's also something that you would usually... F uh, is, is a name, I think, for, some, for something in Ikea, probably. <laughs> because they tend to have names like that, uh, which is also where the font choice comes from to, uh, as closely as possible, match the sort of fonts that they'll be using in Ikea, <laughs> because it's Swedish, you get it? Next up, this one should be relatively uh, straightforward. This is the uh, Giuseppe Verdi, the Italian uh, Italian battleship, obviously named after the composer, and uh, if you translate his name into English, his name's Joe Green, <laughs> or Joseph Green, <laughs> right? So that's where that comes from. This one was a video about stealth destroyers, and I'm actually using the Kagro. So this is a little bit more obscure. Uh, as you may have noticed, I'm a relatively big fan of Monty Python. And Monty Python has a, has a famous sketch about how not to be seen. And Mr. Nesbid <laughs> has learned how not to be seen. <laughs> because everybody who, who who hasn't gets blown up in that sketch. Uh, and um, because it's a Japanese ship, I put the honorific behind it, and that's why it's Nesbit Summer, because it's all about not being spotted, and it happens to be that I'll be sailing in the Kagura. So yeah, this one's a bit more obscure. Uh, this one is the Schlieffen. It's a little less obscure, because uh, he's the man with the plan. It's obviously refer obvious reference to the Schlieffen clan, which was the invasion of France through the Low Countries the Germans went, but it is also the name of one of my favorite Korpiklani songs, which, um, if you don't know them, they are a Finnish folk metal band, and a great fun, and this is all about drinking. So I figured uh, this sounds like a ship that would be fun if, you're, if you've had a couple, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just YOLO, don't feel salty when it doesn't work, but um, uh, cheer loudly when it does. And it all nicely matched into the whole Schlieffen and everything else. That's why Man with a Plan. This one was about the Richelieu, the Richelieu being named after Cardinal Richelieu, presumably. And uh, as such, well, Cardinal in English doesn't, isn't, just the isn't just the title of the position in the church, but can also mean, um, you know, important or very, very impactful. So, hence, Cardinal ideas. This is the Orkan, a Polish destroyer. And Orkan means storm, as far as I know. And this is a this is a riff on the kids' animated movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, because the Orkan has very good uh, flooding chance on the torpedoes. It's stormy with a chance of flood. <laughs> oh, this one, yeah, this was the uh, uh, Novorossiysk, and um, I actually did the 
I actually did the making of video about the research about the Novorossiysk and uh, how I found some political intrigue that was connected to the ship. So political intrigue, military, well, Tom Clancy it is, right? <laughs> That one's pretty much straightforward. Again, it's the British premium battleship, the Marlborough. And um, I grew up in the 80s and the Marlborough man was in every, obviously with a different spelling, was in every, uh, well, on every, every night on TV with the camel uh, cigarette ads, which are now no longer there. But uh, obviously, because also the Marlborough tends to set fires a lot, we called it the cigarette lighter. That one, that was the Lepanto, named after the Battle of Lepanto, which was in the, I believe, 16th century, where uh, the Pope had a fleet and defeated the Ottomans, hence Pope Boat. <laughs> that one was the Kitakaze, uh, a ship that uh, tends to not do an awful lot of damage right, right off the bat, but just kind of annoy the heck out of everybody and hence it's a mosquito because you know it doesn't do a lot of damage but it annoys the crap out of people. Uh, this one was fun as well this was the uh, illustrious uh, British uh, that was when the British carriers came out. Um, slight yeah this this one's a bit, a bit obscure as well there's a Twitter account um, of a fictional airbase in the UK called RAF Lutton and they make a point of posting of posting uh, pictures of air mostly airplanes but also ships uh, and completely misidentifying everything <laughs> which tends to trigger people which they then retweet so uh, they they tend to name their carrier HMS runway boat and since this was the British carrier I figured giving a little uh, I, I didn't even put photograph from, from a Canberra <laughs> into the into the description which for anybody who knows that account should have been a dead giveaway but yeah HMS runway boat uh, this one, again, straightforward. This was the Icarus flying high, because obviously Icarus named after the Greek uh, mythology, the story of Daedalus and Icarus, and yeah, Icarus the sun flying to high, the sun melting the wax that was holding his wings in place, and him falling to his doom. That was that. Uh, this one's the, uh, the Harlem, named after the suburb of Harlem in uh, Manhattan, and hence Manhattan, even though it's a Dutch cruiser. So again, a little bit obscure, but one of those nuggets that I came across when researching uh, about the ship. We've got uh, Große Kurfürst versus Schlieffen. Uh, sword and hammer sounds like uh, sufficiently German brawlery. brawlery. I could have done, done it in German, but um, no one would have understood it probably. <laughs> so uh, obviously, the, the obvious idea here being that um, the... Uh, the Schlieffen is the sword, a more elegant weapon from a more civilized time, whereas uh, the Große Kurfürst is the hammer that just uh, breaks through things. So it just had that vibe to it. This one is the Edinburgh, the gold container, because of her history, because she was shipping, uh, shipping gold from the Soviet Union, supposedly back to the UK, but uh, actually ended up being sunk and the gold being removed many, many years later. Here we've got the Seven Provincien, and that was the introduction of the Dutch airstrike special ability thing. Daisy cutters obviously being uh, the nickname of cluster bombs that the Americans had, and that's where kind of the name comes from, and it sounds sufficiently close to flowers and tulips, and that's always what I'm trying to weave into anything that's coming in Dutch. Because if there's one thing that I enjoy, it is making fun of everybody's national cliches, including my own. Uh, this one was the um, uh, the Cuniberti, the uh, Italian was it Tier Eight destroyer, I believe, named after an Italian uh, naval designer or uh, who was publishing. I think it was in Jane's Fighting Ships an article about a a an all big gun battleship, and that was actually before uh, HMS Dreadnought came to be. So it's not that he invented Dreadnought, but he came up, he, he had this idea, probably at a similar time when other people had it, but before the Dreadnought actually existed. And that's why Dreadnought. Uh, this is the Constellation, uh, which <laughs> was American and very, very chunky. So yeah, supersized being a bit of the cliche that um, 
Americans are eating their fast food in enormous portions and supersizing it is a good thing. So yeah, it's just an American cliche. And another American, this one was the Congress. Uh, this is a play of words on a Jingles Pun, who made that, I believe, about the Okotnik on a video. And uh, the, video, uh, the video thumbnail of, uh, on his side said, uh, long, hard and full of semen. You get the idea. <laughs> but because this is neither hard nor full, nor, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, this is large, soft and full of politicians because it's Congress and it has terrible armor <laughs> and it's a huge target. So that's where that joke came from. Uh, this one was the Christopher Colombo, uh, after the um, Ferrati, the a naval designer who, who came up with a lot of the designs, uh, including the one that is potentially being used for um, as a basis for what the Christopher Colombo uh, turned out to be. And that would have been his opus, as in his, his masterpiece, his greatest achievement, because this is the tier 10. And we've got the Shapayev. Now, this one, again, is a little bit obscure. Enemy at the Gates is uh, the title of a completely ahistorical, <laughs> or mostly ahistorical, uh, very Hollywood movie about um, uh, uh, Vasily Saitsev, the, a famous uh, Soviet sniper during World War II. And uh, while it's a, it's a fun movie to watch, uh, obviously the portrayal of what the Soviets were doing at the time was quite, uh, quite, was quite a bit sketchy, but... Uh, why, why on Shapayev? Well, the Shapayev was named after Vasily Shapayev, who was sort of sort of became a folk hero uh, or like a hero through propaganda uh, to the point that uh, sometimes it would be the butt of jokes already. And um, uh, Saitsev obviously also was uh, was propagandized quite heavily. And so because they're both named Vasily, <laughs> that's how I got. And because it's Soviet, obviously. Uh, so that was the nice kind of loop around here. And we've got the uh, Bourgogne, uh, which says front towards enemy. I believe it's front toward enemy, actually, for some reason. But that is the inscription on the uh, Claymore mine, anti-personnel mine. And uh, Bourgogne obviously being a ship that um, can and should be played very aggressively because it's just too much fun. Uh, that's why you should point your front towards the enemy and run at them rather than r try and run away from them because that's just more fun in the Bourgogne. We've got the bots. Uh, this was the video about uh, what the problems with bots are. I forwarded that to Wargaming. Haven't heard anything back, unfortunately, from that ever. But you never know. And uh, Electric Sheep is an obvious, obviously a reference to... Uh, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, which was the novel uh, that was the basis for the film Blade Runner. And because it's about bots, you know, that's what we're calling. And because they tend to behave pretty stupidly, because, you know, using sheep as a term for a group of people or group of things who behave without much sense, I found that Electric Sheep was kind of a nice play on both of these aspects. We've got, and this was a recent one, the USS Black, uh, the Speed Demon. Well, because she's got the pendant number 666, so obviously <laughs> some demonic reference here. And because both the Black and her torpedoes are dreadfully slow. So that's why I called her the Speed Demon. <laughs> you get what I mean. Speed Demon would generally be more of a term for um, somebody who, who drives kind of too fast or, or dangerously fast. And we've got the Austin. Well, it's it's the Austin, Austin, Texas. It has a lot of guns. Gunslinger comes relatively <laughs> natural. <laughs> and it's all about the bird. The Asashio that uh, I, I was testing the ship on the Asian server. And um, Ground Zero is generally considered a term for a place where something really, really bad happened and like the epicenter of something. Uh, but because it was the Asian server, um, uh, and it tends to be a little bit more, or it used to be a little bit more campy than the other servers, especially in, in higher tiers, ended up doing uh, Camp Ground Zero because, uh, well, the Asashi was definitely the center of bad things originating for the enemy team. <laughs> and that was it. That was, the, that was the list of some of the more obscure uh, 
puns that uh, I came up with throughout the last year for World of Warships Blitz videos. Anyway, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and um, a Happy New Year. And uh, that's it for me today. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.